What is up, YouTubers? We're back in the garage. Behind me is the CB7. She's still here. I didn't forget about her. Right now, the exhaust is broken, so I ordered some new parts off of eBay. I'm waiting for them to come, and then I'll probably make a video of me showing the installation of the exhaust. But for now, let's get back to the E92 build. Yeah, so it's like a good day because it's like um, 47 degrees outside, and I, you know, I just got on a little sweater, not too cold. But um, we got some key components to make significant progress on this car today. So let's do that. So the main focus for today we're gonna put on the intake manifold and try to make all those connections I was talking about. So now that we have the gaskets, we're gonna do that. And also, I'm gonna take off this AC line, disconnect the power steering hose, get all those on there, so that way we can um, be ready to put the front of the car back on, which is the radiator support. All right, so here's what's going on. We have a tire pressure um, receiver basically that goes right here it mounts to the fender liner um, you see this one this one is like damaged so we're gonna replace that I need to find a new connector though but that's later on but we got that so that's good we have a key component the intake manifold gaskets which are these little rings can you believe that? Like $31 for this. And I got this from Advanced Auto Parts. I got this from eBay. And this is the AC line that was um, that I cut like an idiot. This I got from eBay as well. This is gonna go right across the front of the motor like that. And it goes to the condenser. You see it's cut right there. And then we got the power steering hose. This I bought from BMW. I paid about $58 for this. And I also got one of those new hose clamps. If I could, oh, here it is right here. This is the hose clamp. You have to use like a special type of pliers to crimp this. All right, so you guys see all the six ports on the intake manifold. I got a little hand pick right here just to get the seals out. Um, usually if they're still really rubbery, you can reuse them. Like you don't have to replace them every time you disconnect the intake manifold. But if they're really hard and crystallized, then you should replace them. I'm doing it because, I don't know, I just feel like I have to do it. Because it's still pretty malleable. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to replace them. I mean, for $31, this could be a, a lot of money for most people. Because I know I was mad that I had to buy six rubber things for like 30 something dollars. It was like really annoying to buy. Yeah, you just take them out like this. See, that one felt kind of crystallized. When they start sounding like hard plastic, then you know it's no good. I know you guys hear that bird in the back. It's like, it's like mad animals back here right now. I don't know what's going on. I'll probably show you my neighbor's animals. He has like a bunch of geese and chickens and ducks. So it's like pretty crazy. All right. So this is pretty easy. A beginner could do this. You just get the new seal and just pop it in the hole. That's it. All right, that's that. We got all the seals in, and I'm gonna replace the throttle body because I had 
on my E90, I was getting this weird code, and for some reason I thought it was a throttle body, so I had bought one. So I might as well just put it on the car. So we flip this over. You see it has um, a connector right here, and then it has the connector right here. And then you got four 10 millimeter bolts, and then also you have this, uh, whatever this, um, vacuum port or something. When you change the throttle body, you have to calibrate it, so you're gonna need some software. But if you have MHD flasher, you can do it from the app. So this is the throttle body and the gasket. This is still good, I'm just changing it because I have a brand new one. And this is from um, uh, VDO, so apparently, VDO is an original equipment manufacturer for BMW, even though this one says BMW on it. But if you look closely, it says VDO. So in fact, it is an original manufacturer. So this should be an identical part. So it's not like I'm putting a cheaper part on there or something. You see, this don't have the BMW logo, but it's still VDO which is the brand, and it's made in Germany. So the gasket is already pre-installed, so all we gotta do is bolt this back up. Right here is where the clamp is. We're gonna remove that clamp, and then, uh, if you take a look, at the new clamp. Yeah, if you take a look at the new clamp, you see that it's already like assembled. Basically, you just have to crimp it on there. So to release the crimp, you're trying to get underneath one of these tabs and pry it open. Yeah, like this tab right here, you just wanna to try to pry it open to get it loose. That's what we're gonna do. So, if you look closely at the hose, it has this green line on it. That green line, it has to line up, there's an arrow on the nipple that you're gonna put the hose on. So the arrow and the green line needs to line up. That way the hose is in the proper orientation. Okay guys, so installing all these wires and stuff is a pain. It's just like a maze of things here. You got the starter connection, you got the starter uh, wire and then the main power terminal. You got the pressure switch on the high pressure line. You got the high pressure pump itself. And then that same starter wire runs around to the alternator. And then you're gonna have um, some more connections. I'm trying to sort them out. I know some of the connections goes towards the front, like the, the map sensor and all this stuff, but um, yeah, make sure you take mental note of all this because it's pretty tricky. And then you got the other wires running around the transmission going to the O2 sensors. Okay guys, so I think I got mostly everything connected. Um, I realized I made a mistake. There's a bracket that holds part of the wire harness on the transmission. So I had to remove two bolts, actually four bolts because there's two brackets and um, install the wire harness brackets and then put them back. So I connected everything over here, everything over there. I'm still not sure what this wire is for right here, but maybe 
as I keep progressing out, it'll turn up on itself. But um, so I think it's safe to bolt down the manifold now. So a quick rundown of all the connections over here. You have two knock sensors. You have um, the main power on the starter. You have the main power on the alternator. You have a two pin connector on the alternator, a one pin connector on the starter. You have the high pressure pump. You have the high pressure line switch. You have um, what looks like there's a sensor down in the block. I believe that might be the crank sensor. And then you have the map sensor was hanging right there, goes to the charge pipe. And you also have uh, a plug, a sensor that goes in that PVC pipe right there. And then you have two wires that come up that feed the, the upstream oxygen sensors. So the only one that's kind of like has me um, wondering where does it go is this one right here, a two pin connector. All right, so we're under the car now. You see the oxygen sensors get plugged up directly underneath the trans. So this metal bracket I had to put on. And also, if you look on this side here, this, shit, let me get the lip. This is for the oil pressure, I mean the oil level unit. And if you follow this wire going up, there's another bracket right there on those two bolts that goes to the bell housing on the transmission. So I had to remove those and install that bracket. So for the most part, this is done. But there is that one connector that goes back here on the transmission. So I'm gonna um, feed that part of the harness down.